Hey guys, welcome back. We're doing a dotted rose today. I'm picking two different shades of blue, uh, indigo and teal plus hologram for my background. I'm going to use a sponge or a Martha Stewart paint pouncer. Uh, I'll leave that link in the description so that you know where you can find those. I will be using gold today uh, and black, so make sure you have gold acrylic and black acrylic. I'm putting gloves on so I don't wreck my fancy nails that I did myself. And I'm going to start with the dark indigo blue. And I'm going to go around the outside of my stone. Um, and I also do the back with the dark blue. But I only show you that I'm doing the outside here. But I, I promise you I did do the back as well. Now the reason I do this, it gives it like a nice romantic background. Um, I go dark blue and then lighter blue in the center. So once you're done the outside, uh, the dark blue, uh, you go on to the next color blue, which is teal. I'm using teal today. So indigo and teal. Now everywhere you see that I didn't paint yet, that's going to be teal. And I just kind of blend it in with the indigo blue so that it nice softly blends together. You can keep switching back and forth the ends of your sponge uh, and blend the two colors in together nicely. If you find it's not bright enough once you let it dry, do it again. Do a second coat the exact same way you did it the first time. Now when you're done that, let it dry and get out your hologram paint. I will leave a link in the description for that. I'm using a, a fan brush. You can use whatever brush you want and put on as much glitter as you want. Uh, it does dry clear with a nice teal sparkle to it. It looks just gorgeous on this. So once you let that dry, we're going to paint the rose on. Uh, I'm doing this all freehand. So there's not uh, a special uh, way that I do this. Each one of my roses is different. So if you need to pause it so that you can copy what I'm doing, that's just fine with me. Um, you can also practice on paper first, which you do see in some of my tutorials. Uh, but this time I'm just going to jump right on the rock and, and get it started. Now, like I said, I'm not, uh, I'm not technically trained, so I don't really know how to do this the right way. I'm self-taught, so I just put these lines in and petals in until I find that it looks like a rose to me and you do it however you want to do it. Art's supposed to be fun. So I'm doing some little petals off the, the bottom of this, or sorry, leaves off the bottom of the petals. And then I'm gonna draw the stem on. And I'm doing all of this in black, but we're gonna actually let this black outline dry. And then we're gonna go over it with gold. And I'll explain that a little bit more. But uh, right now we're just getting the shape that we want onto the stone and then we're going to fill it in and make it beautiful very, very soon. And like I said, if you need to pause the video so that you can uh, try and, and do the rose petals or, or what have you, uh, just pause it. I'll still be here when you hit the play button again. I'm going to do a couple of uh, thorns off the side. You don't have to do that if you don't want to, but I like the looks of it. There you go. You can pause it. I'm just going to let you know that there's some bits in my video that didn't edit properly, so it might seem like your screen is freezing, uh, but if I'm still talking to you, everything is good. I just added an extra petal at the top there. Um, just so you can see that as well. I just felt like it didn't look right, so I added a, another petal at the top. <laughs> now I'm letting this dry. I'm gonna add my gold now. We're just gonna completely go over all of those lines again, uh, but with gold. This is the easiest way for me to show you how I do it. Um, so once again, if there's any freezing in my video, Please be patient and keep watching. If, if you hear me talking still, we're, we're good. The video is good. Um, but I spent all day, literally all day today, um, editing this video. And um, I couldn't fix the little spots that 
didn't work out very well, so I apologize for that. Now, um, I just want to let you know that I sometimes go over my gold lines more than once just to kind of brighten them up, just in case they look a little bit dull. Depending on what kind of gold paint you use, it looks kind of dull and flat. So I, I usually go over my, my gold once or twice, depending on how it's looking, just so that gold outline stands out really bright. Now you can also do like a rosebud or or no leaves at all, just one stem and, and the petals at the top. It's completely up to you how you do this, but this is just what I like. This is what my, my rose rocks look like most of the time. Now once I've filled in all the gold, we're gonna go back in with black again. I know this seems like a weird step, but we're filling it all in because we're gonna fill it in with color afterwards, and I love dots. So I like doing my dots on a black background so that they stand out more. So basically, we are filling in our gold rose with black. So there, fill it all in, adjust it. You want to thin out some of your gold lines. You just add the, the black in there. Um, I'm also going to be outlining the entire rose, all the petals, everything with black again afterwards. It makes it really pop off the, the background. Um, so I'm just, and I'll add veins in the leaves as well once I fill them in with black and the black paint is dry. Always a good idea to have a hair dryer next to your workspace so that you don't have to wait so long for your blacks and golds and stuff to dry in between or, or doing your background, you don't wanna wait so long. So I always have my hair dryer next to my desk and I have it on a light, cool setting and uh, I dry my rocks quickly while I'm, while I'm working on them because I'm impatient. I like to art. So I am, um, going to you'll notice a big difference once you outline the whole thing with black it just stands right out off the rock I just want you guys to know that I love you all I appreciate you I want to make sure I say that to you every single time I make a tutorial for you you guys have been very patient with me I've been slow with the tutorials it's been so, so busy just September October and November I've been pulling my hair out because I've been so busy and uh, so I want to thank you for your patience this dotted rose was highly requested and I wanted to get it out there for you as soon as possible so I hope you enjoy it don't get frustrated keep trying if I can do it trust me so can you and just enjoy it invite your friends over and have some wine and paint roses together and I promise you, you will love it when it's done. It will look beautiful when it's done. Now I'm going around all the outside with the black paint. And then once we're done that, we're gonna fill it in with color. And I usually start my color with the, the leaves and the petal, or sorry, the leaves and the stem. I'm drawing veins on now with the gold paint. Very simple, just to make the leaves look a little more defined, a little more realistic, but of course my stuff isn't realistic, um, but I just try to give it a little bit of definition in the leaves. There we go, looks pretty cool. Now I use toothpicks because they're very small and I can get into all the little crevices and corners with the toothpicks, but you can also use dotting tools whatever you're comfortable with. Depending on how small your rose is, you might want to use like a, a pin <laughs> or a needle. I'm using two different shades of green, one lighter one and a darker shade, just to contrast a little bit in the, in the leaves and in the stem. I'm starting with the darker color first. You can choose whatever colors you want for your background. Just use the light and dark contrast like I did. Um, same with the, the leaves here and the stem. Use the, a light and dark color green. You don't have to use my colors. 
um, if you don't like them but just use a light and dark color that way there's a little bit of contrast it looks like there's a bit of shading in the leaves now I've started with the top parts just the dark color now the bottom parts of these little leaves are going to be the light green and when I go down the stem I'm going to do dark green on the right side of the stem and light green on the left side so it's kind of like lights coming down shining on the one side of the stem you don't have to do that you can use one flat color green and love it just as much as I love mine and it will be beautiful but I like to do this now I'm doing this stem dark green and the other stem on the right side or sorry, left side will have light green. Now it seems like we're frozen, but I promise you we're not. It's just my terrible editing skills and I'm an artist, I'm not a film editor. <laughs> so that's my excuse. Thank you all for being understanding. <laughs> And we're back. Now I've gone around the veins with the light green in the leaves and then all the rest I fill in with dark green. I just want to make the veins stand out a bit more in the leaves. And it looks like we're frozen again. I apologize for this. I promise you when I was taping it, or not taping it, where am I from? When I was doing the video, um, it didn't freeze at all, so I don't understand. I need help with this. I'm going back around the veins again with the light color, and then I fill it all in with the dark green. Now, I've been super, super busy, so it's taken me a long time to, to respond to some people's questions. So sorry for that, and I appreciate your patience there as well. Uh, I try really hard, but there's a lot of questions on different uh, forms of social media, like Instagram and Facebook and uh, YouTube and Pinterest, and there's all sorts of things that I, I have to get to each day. So if I haven't gotten back to you, I'm sorry, and keep bugging me. If I, if I need to help you with something. Now we're going to fill in the rose and I'm using three different shades for my rose. A dark berry wine, so it's like a dark, dark, dark berry color. I'm using a metallic red, which is garnet. And it looks like a metallic, like bright pink, to be honest with you, but it's gorgeous. And I'm going to use fire coral, which is my lightest color. And I'll show you how I put some contrast in the petals I start off with the darkest color and if you imagine a rose it's usually dark in the very center um, and then I'm going to go around all the tops of the gold on the outside of the gold and all of that's going to be the dark color so all the way around the gold is going to be dark on it it's hard for me to explain but if you need to pause the video and see where I put the berry color it's all just above going out outwards just above the gold and then we're going to add the garnet color on top of that which is what I've started right here I apologize for the frozen bit there again how embarrassing I'm adding the garnet above that berry color so we have two different colors now and all where you see black is going to be the lightest color so it looks like there's a bit of shading going on in your flower it's not just one color but you can do it one color as well that's why I love painting and being creative because you can do whatever you want. You can enjoy my fingernails too because I did those myself. <laughs> I always try to appreciate my fingernails. Now I'm just gonna keep filling in all those black spaces there with the coral 
And then once it's done, look at that. It just looks magical. Now I'm just fixing, just in case I dot it outside of the lines anywhere, I go over and fix it with my gold or my black. And then I'm gonna resin it, which I'm gonna put the tutorial in the link in the description as well. Um, you don't have to use resin, you can seal it with whatever you want, but the resin makes it shine like this. Um, and I love you guys. Thank you so much for your patience. Thank you for watching. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell so you get my notifications. And uh, keep painting. I love you all.